Greetings, I'm Leonard Swidler, the founder and president of the Dialogue Institute at Temple University in Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia is the birthplace of the United States of America, where those immortal words were first penned, all men are created equal. I want to bring greetings and uh, to you at the opening of this wonderful conference uh, in Nigeria, which uh, launches your new Deep Dialogue Institute at the University of Uyo. Uh, this is a magnificent start and extremely important. I would like to reflect on dialogue today, what it means and how, and how we understand it and its importance. I want to start out by teaching you two very brief mantras. The one goes like this, nobody knows everything about anything, therefore dialogue. Perhaps we could all repeat that. Ready to go? Nobody knows everything about anything, therefore dialogue. I'm going to try to spell that out uh, a little bit, but before we do that, let me give you the second mantra. Not quite as catchy and rhythmic, but nevertheless, also very important. It goes like this. All knowledge is interpreted knowledge, therefore dialogue. Got it? All knowledge is interpreted knowledge, therefore dialogue. Let's try that together. All knowledge is, is interpreted knowledge, therefore dialogue. Let me say something then about what I mean when I, with that first mantra, uh, that nobody knows everything about anything, therefore dialogue. Just think, what chemist would get up in the morning and say to him or herself, I know everything about chemistry. I don't need to go to the laboratory and work anymore. Uh, if I were uh, head of a company and, and had this chemist as an employee, I'd fire him because, of course, he's wasting my time. Uh, the same would be true of what physicists would say. I know everything about physics. I don't need to, to learn anymore. Or what sociologist or what economist or go all the way, what scholar of religion would say, I know everything about religion. I don't need to study or think anymore. And religion, of course, is the most complex, the most comprehensive of all the disciplines. Basically, the definition of religion is, religion is an explanation of the ultimate, the total meaning of life and how to live according to that explanation. But think of it, about this. If we can't know everything about any of the smaller components about chemistry, physics, psychology, sociology of life, how can we possibly know everything about the totality of this whole uh, complex of what life is and is all about. Of course we can't know everything about religion. If that's the case, then we need to engage in dialogue. Why? Well, think about it. Here we are. I'm s sitting in Philadelphia. You're sitting in Nigeria you see all aspects of life from your perspective, just like, let's say, this piece of machinery. 
you're looking at this, and this this symbolizes life, human life. We all share this together. You're seeing this aspect of human life. I'm seeing at the same time. I from Philadelphia, you from Nigeria. And if you're careful, you can describe this aspect of human life that you're experiencing. And if you're careful, your description, your statement about human life is, and then describe it, it will be true. It will really describe that aspect of human life that you're looking at. I'm looking at the same aspect of that of human life here in Philadelphia from my perspective. And if I am also careful, my description will also be true. It will describe this aspect of human life as I experience it. My statement will be true. Your statement will be true. They're both true. But they're not both the same. Each one is limited, partial. This is necessarily the case because we humans are limited. We are partial. We are not the whole universe. We are, to use theological language, we are not God. We are not unlimited, infinite, infinite. We are finite. We are limited. Therefore, all knowledge is limited knowledge, and therefore we need to engage in dialogue. Now let me say something about the second mantra. All knowledge is interpreted knowledge. Think about this, th this famous story of the blind men standing around an elephant, each one feeling the elephant and feels only a certain part. One of the blind men feels the ears of the element, elephant. It's huge. It says, ah, this is like a big palm tree. The leaves are so big. And another one uh, had gotten a hold of the tail of the elephant. Said, ah, this is a rope. It, it just feels just like a rope. Another one grabs the tusk said, ah, this is a plow uh, to dig the earth, and so on, all the different parts of the element. Elephant. Now, each one is true, but if we see it, it's always interpreted from our perspective. All knowledge is interpreted knowledge. It must come into my head, into my brain. It's like, also like liquid jello or liquid concrete. If you're building a building, you don't pour the concrete on the ground. It just runs out, away. You have to pour it into a container. And then the concrete takes the shape of the container. It'll be round or square, oblong, so big, so small whatever the shape of the container. Knowledge is like that. It has to come into my brain, into your brain, into his brain, to her brain. And therefore, and like the concrete, when we take it out of the container, it has the shape of the container, or jello. It, when it finally solidifies, we take it out it has the shape of the container. Therefore, knowledge is like that. All knowledge is interpreted knowledge. And therefore, we have to engage in dialogue. Because like the blind men, we only see part of the elephant. We don't even see it. We only perceive part of the elephant. And to think that that is the whole explanation is to distort the reality. The only way we can come ever closer to a complete and fully true uh, understanding of reality is if we can share our perception of the leaves, the tail, the trunk, 
the body, etc., etc., and that we do through dialogue. So to repeat then, these two little mantras sum up in many ways a very important dimension of what we mean by dialogue. Now let's talk a little bit about the word dialogue. It's an English word and of course it has many uh, similar cognates in other Western languages and perhaps others as well. Uh, but it comes originally from the Greek word dialogos, which has two parts, as you can hear, dia, D-I-A, and then logos, L-O-G-O-S. Logos primarily, first of all, means thinking, like our English word logic. Logic is organized, systematic thinking. So logos in Greek primarily, first of all, means thinking or thought. However, how do I transfer my thinking, my thought, to you? It has to be done through words, either spoken or written. And so the secondary meaning of the term logos is words. Now what about the dia, D-I-A? In the first part of dialogos, or dialogue in English. Dia in Greek means across or together. And so literally, dialogos, or dialogue, means thinking and talking together. That's what dialogue means thinking and talking together. That's what the, the word means. Now, in fact, I think that dialogue, as we're talking about it here, is not just about the thinking and talking together, although that's its first and very important meaning. I want to argue that dialogue, in fact, is the foundation of all reality, from the, from the mega level to the micro level. The mega, the biggest level. Think about the whole cosmos. The whole cosmos is after the Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago, uh, is fundamentally a dialogue between matter and energy. If all of the stars, the energy of the stars, were to collapse into just matter, it would be a dark hole, dark matter, dark, a dark hole. We would not have the reality that we have. If we're, on, we're only energy, there would be no matter. Uh, but that's not what the cosmos is. It is this fundamentally dialogic together, back and forth, dialogue between matter and energy. That's on the mega level. Go all the way down to subatomic level, the micro level, the same thing. Fundamentally a dialogue between positive and negative energy, protons and electrons. If they were to collapse into one or the other, we would not have the reality we have. The reality we have is, in the micro level is this fundamental dialogue between positive and negative protons and electrons. But it doesn't stay at that level, this dialogue. We move up the ladder to us humans. Think of us humans. We also are a fundamental dialogue between body and spirit, body and soul. If it's only body, only matter, we're just a slab of dead meat. If we were only spirits, we would not be bodies. We would not be human. We would not have the world that we have. The world we have 
is made up of, of us humans, is made up of a fundamental dialogue between body and spirit. Move beyond that. We are also, we humans, are fundamentally a dialogue between male and female, woman and man. If there were no dialogue between woman and man, after two generations, there would be no humanity. We again are fundamentally dialogic, in this case a dialogue between woman and man. Even more, we human beings, individual persons, I, Leonard Swidler, for example, am a dialogue between myself and community, other humans. I could not come into existence without the dialogue of at least the fundamental community of my mother and father and the larger family, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles and cousins, etc., etc. We could not be human if we were not in a community, but if we know that to stress only the community, like some of these horrible uh, dictatorships that we've had in the 20th century of communism, Nazism, fascism, Maoism, they all were destructive because they focused only on one dimension, the community, the individual person was swallowed up. The opposite is also totally destructive. This is where we get murder, mayhem, and chaos. And so, in, as we look at the whole of reality, from the macro level to the micro level, to all dimensions of our humanness, we are fundamentally a dialogue. And we humans are the prime dancers in what I call this cosmic dance of dialogue. Now that's what we are focusing on in our reflections today. That's what the whole Deep Dialogue Institute is all about. It's perceiving and grasping and understanding the fundamentally dialogic structure of all reality, from the micro to the macro, from the material to the spiritual. And we humans, as I say, are the prime dancers in this cosmic dance of dialogue. Now, how do we humans engage in this dialogue? I think there are at least four major areas. We talked a little bit about one already, and I like to help people remember things. We have the four areas, the four H's, the dialogue of the head, dialogue of the hands, dialogue of the heart, and dialogue of the whole. In this case, not H-O-L-E, but W-H-O-L-E. We'll come to that in a moment. First of all, the dialogue of the head, we've been talking a little bit about that with these two mantras, namely that with the dialogue of the head we search together for the truth, to understand the truth, to understand reality, which of course is an endless task because reality as its source is endless. Then there's the dialogue of the hands. Here we join hands together and work to create goodness. We work to make this house in which we live, the earth and the universe, into a home where we can all live in harmony. There is another H. So we have the dialogue of the head searching for the truth the dialogue of the joined hands searching for the good. 
And then there is the dialogue of the heart. All humans create new art. We give expression to our feelings of joy, sadness, uh, ex exclamation, profound feelings of love, even irritation and hatred. And we express this all in our art. This is the easiest door, the art of the other, the easiest door to go through to encounter the other. This is the dialogue of the heart. There is another dimension, namely the spiritual dimension, the dialogue of the heart, because here we go into our interior and we meet each other in the, the spiritual world. This is also the dialogue of the heart. And fourth is the dialogue of the whole, W-H-O-L-E. We have to integrate our efforts at the dialogue of the head, hands, and heart into a whole. And our English word holy, H-O-L-Y, in fact does mean, it comes from the Greek holos, H-O-L-O-S. And that means whole, integrated, becoming one, complete. And so to be a full human being, we have to join together in the dialogue of the head, the hands, and the heart, and become holy. I wish us all well in this new deep dialogue of insti Institute. I want to say thank you very much <coughs> to the University of Uyo and the, the administration, and especially to uh, Professor Udo uh, for starting this wonderful new organization, your Deep Dialogue Institute, committed to prom promoting dialogue in not only a, a Nigeria, but Africa and beyond. And I also would like to apologize for the fact that I'm doing this uh, by a video rather than being with you face to face, which I had looked forward to doing, um, but because of health issues, I ended up not in Nigeria, but in the hospital. Fortunately, um, my health has basically returned, and I look forward to meeting with you sometime in the near future in Nigeria and elsewhere.